Well, if you own a tractor and you are trying to decide whether or not you really want to get a grapple, let me show you some of the work this thing will perform and show you how to do it safely, that you won't get hurt and that you won't hurt the grapple. It is a workhorse, it is a beast, and you can get a lot done with a grapple. And to answer your question, yes, you need one of these things. Let's go to work. So what we have here is a group of trees that have fallen down. I've got to try to separate them. I can't grab them all at once, not because of weight limit necessarily, but because they're just so long. I didn't cut them up into real short pieces, so I'm trying to pick one tree off of another tree right here. And these trees are real brittle. They're breaking real easy which leaves a lot of residue on the ground. So I grab that one tree, I'll pull it out, drop it down, reposition to get a better grasp on it. Again, not because it's too heavy, because it's, uh, it's dead, it's rotten, and uh, it's not that heavy, but I've got to go through a 12-foot gate. So I have to position this thing, or any other load that you're gonna pick up high, to where it is not heavy to one side because I've got to pick it up high to go over a 12 foot gate. This thing is about 30 feet long probably and I'm trying to get through a 12 foot gate. I'm trying to get just that one tree and not both trees and try not to squeeze it so hard that I break it apart. But that grapple is so strong it's hard not to do that especially as brittle as this wood is. That's a pretty good bite right there. Go haul that off. Coming back for the other section of the tree. A little bit easier. I don't have much else to deal with except that one tree. And see how I roll it over like that? Once I start closing that grapple, if I roll the front of that grapple over, let the closing end get close to the ground, I found I can really pick up a lot of uh, debris and stuff that's on the ground and will save me a few trips. Back now for the scraps, the very tops of them, kind of raking them forward a little bit. Just to the left of the camera uh, frame, I have a hot wire I'm trying not to get into and break. Get a good bite on it, squeeze it up, but not so tight. Squeeze it up tight enough to lift it, but not so tight that it breaks apart and drops a lot of it back on the ground. I've got a piece laying here that I cut off, kind of a fork, pretty good size, probably 15 feet long. Kind of a unwieldy, heavy on one end. And I want to try to take more than one thing at a time if I can. Take it over to another little piece, roll it up, try to get that last piece squeezed up in that grapple. Take it away. I'll show you in a minute how well it rakes. It does a good job raking. That's the part you have to be careful with of tearing up the grapple. You gotta be careful when you rake, especially backwards with it. You can really tear up the grapple. Now here's two pieces that I cut up, probably 10, 12 feet long. Uh, they're heavy, but not that heavy. It's just I need to make sure I'm not so heavy that I'm unwieldy, that I can't get through that 12 foot gate. And there you see the hot wire I'm trying to uh, avoid when I'm picking up some of these limbs. I don't want them to slap back and break that wire. Here I am at the burn pile dropping off those two logs I just picked up. It's getting kind of tall. Got to lift it up all the way. Whenever you're lifting a load, you've got to remember to subtract your lifting capacity of, of your loader 
Subtract the weight of your grapple from that. My loader will lift about 23, 2,500 pounds, but that grapple weighs 850 pounds. This is the load right here that's testing the capacity of that grapple and the capacity of my front loader. It is heavy. It's about 16, 18 inches, about 15, 16 foot long, and it is heavy. You can see the back end of my tractor almost come off the ground there when I when I let it down. So I'm not going to pick it up. Little little concerned about picking it up so high and trying to put it on the top of that brush pile. So I'll just get it close and push it up in there so it'll burn good. And I'll, I'll be piling some more stuff on top of it here in a minute that'll help it to burn. Scoot it up in there with the grapple. Let's go back and get another load. Now this is that 12 foot gate that I have to go in and out of. Some of those big long pieces are much bigger than that gate. Much longer than that gate is wide. Now here I've got a piece of uh, cedar tree that I pulled up with a root ball. And yes, it will pull up a tree if your tractor's strong enough to do it. I had to rock it back and forth. It took a little bit, but it pulled it up. It's a little heavy on the left side of the tractor there with that root ball and that tree hanging off to the side. So got to be a little careful. And you always got to watch out the end of your stuff. I've got a fence there I'm trying not to hit. Got to go through gates such as that. So just keep in mind there's a, actually a, a high wire over my head too. So here's the rake function of the grapple. Let me caution you on this. It does a real good job raking but you don't want to put any downward pressure on that grapple. Just let the weight of the grapple and the weight of the front end loader pull your material. Watch me, right here I put it in what's called a float position right there. So the grapple has no weight on it except for the weight of the grapple, which is substantial. If you're raking backwards, especially if you're raking fast and you hit a stump, you hit a big root, something like that, you can bend those pistons on that hydraulic ram and that is expensive. My dealer told me he sees a lot of that and cautioned me when I'm raking backwards whether it's maybe planting grass, maybe a food plot or something like that. A lot of people use them for that but they'll, they, a lot of people also tear up their grapples raking backwards with a lot of downward pressure at a fast speed. It'll also rake forwards. Raking forward is, is a real good way to do it, except sometimes it wants to dig into the ground. So you got to be careful not to put so much. You don't want to get it all the way down on the ground just far enough to get under whatever you're trying to push, but not so far down that you're tearing your grass up. Again, raking frontwards into a pile. And yes, well, anytime you rake, you're going to be getting some grass. You're going to be tearing up the grass and you're, you're going to have a lot of grass in your material. That's just the nature of the beast. Roll it over. Let that front end get closer to the ground. Squeeze it. Pick it up. Shake the dirt off of it. You probably already know this, but dirt does not burn. So you want to try to keep as much of it out of your burn pile as you can. Come back, rake a little more, pick up the last of it. I found that the closing end of that grapple will get real close to the ground and pick up your material. If you'll, as you, as it's closing, just roll the front of it over just a little bit, tilting it forward with the tilt on your front end loader. Raking up the very last of the sticks here, trying to get it all. You can get good at this, it's not hard. You'll scratch a lot of ground up before you learn how to do it good, but get to where you can pick up pretty small stuff with it. Anyway, uh, cows are grazing and Pretty much got everything. I got some bark laying here and there, but that bark's gonna rot real quick. Everything's gonna rot. Everything's gonna look good. And I've got some more stuff to do. 
but never a dull moment when you got as many trees as I got. There's always limbs on the ground. But it looks good, and I'm glad to do it. These, those trees have been down for nine months. And I've just been waiting to, uh, waiting to get them, waiting for a cool day. I don't cut wood during the summertime. I don't cut wood when it's hot. So glad to get it done now. First cool day, about 75 today. Beautiful, beautiful day. Not a cloud in the sky. Beautiful day. All right, shoot. That's it for today. Tomorrow's a whole new adventure. <laughs> All right, we're going.